I love weird media, especially weird video games. I just love the feeling of seeing something so out there that it leaves you in shock. Something so unique and strange that you've never seen anything like it before. That is what this list is about. Keep in mind that this list is in no particular order, and that I think all these games are great. If there's a game you think should have been on this list, tell me down in the comments. I'll check it out. Without further ado, here are the 10 weirdest video games worth checking out. Number 10. Ribbit King. Ribbit King is the weirdest sports game I've ever seen. That is, if you can even call it a sports game. The sport this game focuses on is frolf. Basically, it's frog golf. Using a mallet, you launch frogs off a catapult and try to get them to land into a water hole. Our main character is Scooter, an alien carpenter, and the only one on his planet, mind you, who has to enter a frolf tournament so he can save his planet from an energy crisis. The story is very bare bones in this game, but it makes up for that with its charming cast of characters and cute cartoony style. Some of these characters are a sentient picnic basket, a sleepy princess with a fish on her head, and an evil gumball machine. Now this being a sports game, you might think that the gameplay is very straightforward and boring. That's where you'd be wrong. This game is pure chaos. The second you launch that frog, there is no guarantee it's going to land where you aimed. The course is filled with obstacles that are nigh impossible to avoid. Spider webs that will make you fly through the air, flies that will make your frog jump to another spot, and god forbid you encounter one of those snakes that will straight up eat your frog. The game always manages to stay fresh by introducing a new gimmick in pretty much every level, never giving the player time to adapt. You never know what crazy gimmick the game is going to throw at you next. This game also has a great multiplayer versus mode, an excellent alternative if you don't want to play the story mode. The game also comes with a bonus disc featuring some very WTF worthy bonus cutscenes. This is a game with a crazy premise and even crazier execution, putting it on this list. Number 9 Danganronpa Another Episode Ultra Despair Girls Jeez, that title is one hell of a mouthful. Ultra Despair Girls is a third-person shooter that follows high school student Kamaro Naegi and romance author by day, serial killer by night, Toko Fukawa, as they battle their way through Toa City, a post-apocalyptic hellscape where children are carrying out a genocide against adults. Despite the gameplay being rather clunky, this game fully makes up for this with its amazing plot and characters. Now then, what makes this game so weird? That would be its atmosphere. There is a specific term for this coined by its creator, known as Psycho Pop. It's extremely dark subject matter contrasted with a bright and poppy atmosphere. You can notice this just by looking at the environments the game takes place in. There are usually dead bodies lying everywhere, however, these bodies are always a bright blue or pink and any blood in the game is a hot pink color. Sometimes this is reversed. There will be an extremely dark and dingy atmosphere but there will be a constant comedic banter between the two main characters. The game does not pull its punches when it comes to disturbing moments though. This game deals with extremely dark subject matter, most prominently genocide and child abuse, and is certainly not afraid to cross many lines in order to shock the player. The game will show you an extremely dark scene, let it linger just long enough to let it sink in, and then throw a funny scene at you and resume the boppin' soundtrack given the player extreme mood whiplash. If there's one thing this game excels at, it's mood whiplash. For example, in one scene our cast finds a severed head. The next thing you know, Kamaro is possessed by it and the scene devolves into a parody of The Exorcist. This game is all about contrast. It constantly straddles the line between disturbing and funny. Dark, yet bright. Number 8. Gregory Horror Show you know a show is obscure when its video game adaptation is better known than the show it's based off. That's right, this game is a TV show tie-in. Don't let that discourage you though, this game is anything but a cheap tie-in. In Gregory Horror Show, you play as an unnamed player character, hereon referred to as the guest, as they try to escape the purgatory of the Gregory House Hotel. In order to do this, 
you need to collect the souls of Gregory House's residents, most of whom are quite hostile. The residents are this game's main draw. Each one has a very unique design that will be sure to stick with you, and their personalities all represent an adult fear. Some of my favorites are the Swedish bro version of Death, the horny lizard nurse Catherine, and of course, the proprietor of Gregory House himself, Gregory. This game is the brainchild of character designer Naomi Iwata, who is known for his unique CG papercraft style and his work on TV shows such as Pekola and Pingu in the City. Don't be fooled by its creator's background though, despite being directed at kids, this game has some darker moments for sure. This game also has a very interesting atmosphere. All the characters are cubic, making the game's art style stand out. Make no mistake though, this game is rather creepy. Imagine it as a survival horror for kids. It's a strange combination, I know, but somehow it works. The gameplay is also quite interesting. In the top right corner of the screen, there is a clock. The clock is the key to mastering this game. You need to memorize each resident's schedule and take advantage of that to avoid them, or in some cases, take their souls. Think of it like Majora's Mask mixed with a stealth game. The clock is constantly moving and never stops, helping create a constant state of urgency. Overall, this is a game with both a weird aesthetic and unique gameplay, making for a weird experience you won't forget anytime soon. Number 7. Hatoful Boyfriend This game is a bird dating simulator. Yes, you heard me right. This is a game where the player is a human girl who dates birds with human level intelligence. Our story follows Hyoko, a hunter-gatherer human who is invited to join the all-bird school, St. Pidgeon Nations. The game then plays out like your standard romance visual novel. Hyoko is introduced to her cast of lucky avian bachelors, each of which are representative of the stereotypical characters you usually see in dating sims. We have Ryota, the childhood friend, wealthy snob Sakia, the cheerful Yuya, Nageki the bookworm, Manic Pixie Dream Boy Okasan, the always sleepy Kazuaki, the creepy ass Dr. Shu, and the Chuni Angel. You may think that this is just another typical romance game just with birds instead of humans, but that's where you would be dead wrong. The weirdest part about this game is that it isn't a joke game, and that it's actually pretty damn good. These characters are much deeper than what they look like on the surface. The story itself is also pretty good. Some routes will be sad romance tales with heavy themes, while others will be tense and disturbing, and some routes are even downright insane. On its own, the game is an alright dating simulator, but there is so much more to this game than meets the eye. Once you finish the main routes, you unlock the true route. This is where the game takes a complete 180 and becomes a horror thriller. Also, the writing gets 10 times better and you completely forget that you are playing a bird dating sim as you are completely sucked into the complex narrative. The game does something really interesting with this as out of place hints are strewn about the romantic routes. All of these hints come together in the true route, creating a great sense of realization for the player. Overall, the weird thing about this game is that despite its jokey premise, it has a damn solid story with twists and turns that will leave you on the edge of your seat. Number 6. Trio the Punch, Never Forget Me I can summarize this entire game in two words. Batshit insane. Wait, isn't that three words? Ah, forget it. Trio the Punch is an arcade beat-em-up that makes absolutely no sense at all. It's one of those games where it intentionally makes no sense. The whole point of the game is to shock and confuse the player. And oh boy. It does its job well, alright. Everything about this game is weird. You play as one of three characters, all of whom have a very intense expression on their face. After each level, you get to do a random chance minigame with a screaming old dude who spouts out great quotes like, Lucky Cha Cha Cha! The main enemies in this game are these shirtless mustachioed men, most of which go down with just one hit. Where this game really shines, is its absolutely insane bosses. 
There are too many to talk about all of them here, but I will talk about my favorites. The first boss you face is a giant statue of a fat man being carried by tiny fat men who shoots fireballs from his big toe. Another boss is a pink sheep that forces you to play as a sheep for the entirety of the next level if you get hit by it. Another one is a giant totem pole of weird enemies stacked on top of one another. Hell, at one point you even fight the screaming old dude who says the unforgettable quote, You found me out! And of course, who can forget the amazing fight with Colonel Sanders? Yes, you heard me right. Colonel Sanders. The colonel then proceeds to explode and turn into a bird who throws fried chicken at you. God, I love this game. The game is also known for its nonsensical dialogue. In one stage, the words, Weebles fall down, flashes across the screen, then freezes your game. This freezing is intentional and not a glitch. This happens over and over for the entire stage. Another stage is called, The Moon is Your Friend, despite the moon attacking you in said stage. And who can forget the iconic ending? In the final stage, there are no enemies. You are forced to kill innocent animals in a park, with the game saying things such as CRUITY in all caps in the background. Once you kill enough, the game says, YOU FIGURED IT OUT, and reveals a giant pair of eyes under the stage staring at the player. It turns out this game was actually a cosmic horror all along? What? Well, as it says in the title, this is a game so weird, you won't ever forget it. Number 5. Vivian Clark Vivian Clark is a game within a game. Gameception. Vivian Clark is an about 12 hour long game hidden within the 2 hour long joke game Soda Drinker Pro. It's a rare occasion when the secret game is actually better than the game it's hidden in. If I could describe Vivian Clark I would say it's a hand-drawn, free-roam, WarioWare-esque game. In this game, you play as a raindrop. The main mechanic of this game revolves around its many mini-games. If you touch another entity, you get transported to their corresponding mini-game. In this way, it's a free-roam game where you travel through a world of mini-games. These mini-games can also be accessed through the hub world, which is quite ominous if I do say so myself. Good luck trying to make any sense of its hub world though. This game is huge and its world is extremely complicated, making getting your bearings and finding your way rather hard. Gameplay often changes on a dime. One second you will be peacefully floating down the sky as a raindrop, and the next second you will be a snake scaling a building avoiding fire. This game can be very confusing as it doesn't really tell you much about what you're supposed to be doing or how to achieve those goals. Even with a guide, you will still be left confused and disoriented. This game has an art style all its own. Everything from the characters to the textures look like they were drawn in MS Paint. This is in no way a bad thing though, as it gives the game a very unique vibe. It's like if you let a 6 year old create a video game, that's the vibe it gives off. The game also has a great soundtrack composed by its creator. Although very simple, it is very catchy and effective, giving the game a chaotic yet calm vibe. This game radiates pure chaotic energy, yet at the same time, it is somehow beautiful. Number 4. Tulip Tulip is a game about kissing. Yes, kissing is this game's main mechanic. You kiss everything in this game. Aliens, old men, lions, nothing is unkissable in this game. Our story follows the poor boy, who has just moved to Long Life Town with his father. He falls in love with a girl in the town, but she tells him he is not popular enough. In order to become more popular, the poor boy must kiss every character in the town. Let's not get into the implications of that. This game is weird on so many levels. The character designs are all very exaggerated and somewhat jarring. There are some characters who are just inanimate objects with a fleshy face. My favorite of these characters is Dan Yamada, a sentient pole with legs who constantly complains about not getting paid enough. He also shows up in the game over screen where he kicks your unconscious body and walks off. D 
dickhead. The plot is also very strange. It revolves around the poor boy's attempts to write the perfect love letter, and the various misadventures he has along the way. These include making first contact with aliens, becoming the CEO of a giant factory, writing a curse involving sentient bells, confronting a blood-obsessed maniac, and many, many more. Also, you save by going to the bathroom. The game has an absolutely beautiful aesthetic based on 50s era Japan that is perfectly complemented by its cheerful scat jazz score. It manages to create a sense of childhood nostalgia, even if you never lived through that era. Despite its generally cheery atmosphere, the game is not afraid to hit heavy when it needs to. The game manages to tackle heavy topics such as alcoholism and how it affects a family, being taken advantage of by cults, and being unhappy with your job. The game can also be surprisingly emotional at times. The zombie Mika arc is enough to bring any man to tears. Keep in mind though, if you are going to try this game, it is brutally difficult and will punish the player for the smallest reasons. The game is so hard that it came with a guide when it first released. Overall, Tulip is a very, very strange and very, very difficult game that manages to tell a surprisingly good coming of age story. Number 3 LSD Dream Emulator Imagine if David Lynch made a video game. That video game would be LSD. LSD is the creation of experimental artist Osamu Sato, who decided to make a game based off a coworker's dream journal. LSD has very minimal gameplay, the only thing you can do is walk around. Despite this, the game's mechanics are actually quite complex. Everything in this game is randomized. Each dream is new and unique, although you may sometimes find yourself in the same areas, there will always be something different. Each dream lasts around 10 minutes, just enough time to let you soak up the trippy atmosphere. The dreams can range from bright and happy to dark and disturbing. Again, it is all randomized. Touching anything randomly teleports you to another location. There is effectively no way to get your bearings in this game since it's so non-linear. Despite being completely randomized, there are a few reoccurring NPCs. One of these is the ominous Grey Man, who resets your game progress if you touch him. The longer you play the game, the more the game begins to intentionally corrupt itself, slowly becoming more and more disturbing. After you wake up, each dream is described on a grid. The grid has four extremities, upper, downer, dynamic, and static. The more upper your dream is, the more happy and vibrant it will be. The opposite is to be said about downer dreams. The more downer your dream is, the more dark and ominous it will be. If your dream is static, you won't encounter many NPCs. Again, dynamic is the opposite. The goal of the game is to play through all 365 dream days, although it will be quite hard to reach that before the game corrupts itself. LSD still remains shrouded in confusion however, as most people still don't fully understand how the game works. Number 2 Off Off is a Belgian RPG. It's a nice game for cute children that may or may not contain scenes that are shocking to an unwarned public. Maybe. Off is such a hard game to describe because you never really know much about what's actually going on in it. In this game you play as the batter. His goal is to purify the world from ghosts known as specters. The world of Off runs off five main elements. Smoke, metal, plastic, meat, and sugar. This is just a glimpse into how weird the world of Off is. Off's world consists of four zones. All of these zones have a similar color palette, white and another bright color. The game's atmosphere feels very saturated due to the abundance of white and dry colors. I will say, the combat in this game is rather unimpressive, however, I still find its puzzles to be quite enjoyable. Some of them can take a while to figure out though. The main draw of this game is its plot and atmosphere. Despite not having much in terms of actual plot, it still manages to be very effective in drawing out your emotions. Nothing much really happens until the ending, 
but it will feel like a lot has. The game takes a total tonal shift in the second half, and going from just plain weird to extremely disturbing. And oh man, that ending. I won't spoil anything, but it's one of those, am I the bad guy stories? I love the character designs in this game. All character portraits and sprites are in full black and white. Each enemy is unique, and I found myself really enjoying the variety of enemy designs, from silly to disturbing. I also need to mention this game's hauntingly alien soundtrack. It truly does sound like something from another world. The soundtrack is mostly atmospheric, but manages to complement the game's aesthetic perfectly. Despite being a very artsy game, Off never manages to come off as pretentious, and always stays entertaining. The only complaint I have is that the game is quite short because, god, I just couldn't get enough of Off's alien world. Number 1. Yuma Nikki. Yes, I have another dream exploration game on this list, but trust me, it is nothing like LSD. In Yuma Nikki, you explore the pixelated dreams of young Shudden Matatsuki. The main goal is to collect the many hidden effects around her dream world. That's it. No plot, nothing. Yuma Nikki is all about staying mysterious. There's even no dialogue. Every single thing in this game is left up to the player to interpret. Even the atmosphere is up to interpretation. I personally find the game to be quite relaxing, while others have said they find it scary. The only thing more mysterious than the game itself is its production history. We don't know who made the game. We only know that their name is Kikiyama, and that they released the game in 2004. The world in Yuminiki is huge and is all connected. It's very easy to get lost, but that's all part of the game. The best part about this game is stumbling upon some bizarre area or event completely by accident. Despite not having much of a goal, the game still manages to make you feel like you are accomplishing something. That's the true goal of the game, to absorb the environments around you. These environments are beautiful, despite their simplicity. There are a variety of beautiful areas to discover in this game from abstract block worlds to pink seas to dark docks. Every area has a different atmosphere and evokes a different emotion in the player. A big part of this comes from the game's soundtrack. Despite being simple 10 second loops, they do a great job of provoking emotion in the player. I could listen to them for hours. Another strange effect this game has is the emotional bond the player forms with Matatsuki. Since she is the only real person you can interact with in this game, you quickly become attached to her. Small cutscenes become deeply emotional, and you begin to project your own emotions onto her. I won't spoil the ending, but I promise that it will leave you on the verge of tears, despite its vagueness. I love Yuma Nikki, and I highly recommend that everyone give it a try. So there, that's my list of the 10 weirdest games you should check out. I highly recommend that you try out as many of these games as you can, I promise you, they are all great. Who knows, you might just find a new favorite. Tell me in the comments below what your thoughts on my picks are, and tell me what games you think should be on this list. This is CJ Max signing off. Have a nice tragedy.